the capacity to do just that. Grenada's longest-serving Minister for Finance, Anthony Boson, says it can and must be done to remove some of the burden off the backs of Grenadians. He says government can afford to forego some of its revenue that it collects from the sale of a gallon of gas. We are saying why not cut back? You take um, 225 and use that to subsidize. So you can't afford to have the price of LPG, the 20-pound cylinder, rising above $50. It has never reached that. Hi. The International Monetary Fund is the foremost world authority that helps countries restructure and position themselves for growth. The question of government subsidization of petroleum products such as gasoline and LPG was posed to head of the IMF mission to Grenada, Nita Thaka. She says no government can do that at this time. I don't think there's any government that has room to subsidize uh, food and fuel price increases for the entire population. Uh, having said that, um, you know, targeted cash transfers or a targeted subsidy to the poor and vulnerable groups, those who are really hurting, uh, the government has to find trade-offs. You know, to, uh, government usually tries and finds trade-offs and uh, and does that. And you know, the IMF has always been supportive of targeted subsidies, targeted assistance to the poor and vulnerable groups. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't subscribe to the, uh, to the, to, you know, to the club that says that because prices are rising, uh, you know, they should be, uh, the government should subsidize that. Thaka says the practice only pushes the problem into the future. Because it introduces market distortions. You know, if, if a, if a commodity is expensive, then you know people need to reduce the demand for that. And subsidizing, uh, you know, subsidizing products doesn't solve the problem; it only pushes the problem forward. So yes, as long as you know, as long as the uh, the you know assistance is targeted to very well-defined poor and vulnerable groups, um, we think we think that's what the government has in mind. And that is something that, you know, the IMF has always supported. But no, not across the, across the board subsidies to everybody. We don't support that. We think it's very costly, and we think it's not a good use of taxpayer money. While not providing a specific timeline, Minister for Finance Nazim Burke says his government is considering a number of options to help alleviate some of the burden on the most vulnerable government is presently considering what options um, might be able to take to cushion the effects of the fuel prices um, on, on, the, on the poor and vulnerable, in particular to see what measures, if any, can be taken to deal with the 20-pound cylinder especially. This, as you know, is, is widely used by the population and uh, we know that um, as the prices continue to jump, it is having a very negative impact on the livelihoods of many of our people so this is something that we're working to see how best we can we can treat with the IMF says from their travels throughout the region gas and food prices are rising and the countries are challenged to come up with creative solutions to meet the demands MTV News Ria Murray Trinidad and Tobago Labor Minister Errol McLeod to deliver the feature address at this weekend's Trades Union Council 10th biannual convention the convention, which brings together delegates from the six affiliated unions, will focus on the social and economic crisis and its impact on workers. The trade union movement in Grenada says one of its biggest challenges is to find ways of preserving jobs in this hard economic time. The issue will be among several agenda items down for discussion when the Umbrella Trade Union body, the TUC, holds its 10th biennial convention on Saturday, 25th March. Working under the team of workers fueling economic growth and recovery, delegates representing more than half a dozen trade unions are expected to take a critical analysis of the situation. President of the TUC, Madonna Hafford, highlights some of the challenges trade union leaders have to deal with. Unions, we have been championing the issue of jobs recovery. If we do not do that, it means to say that you would have more persons unemployed and the economies would not be recovered. Because no matter what, as long as you have workers in place, workers are in 
that will help the economy to be stimulated because if you don't have money running in the country definitely you will have problems and so even though some workers may find well okay salaries are small um, I, I cannot meet my day-to-day -day commitments etc but the elderly in our society will tell you half a loaf is better than none so accept what you're getting until the better days will come but how challenging is it for trade unionists to negotiate in these tough economic times, keeping in mind the preservation of jobs as a key factor? President of the CIWU, George Mason, says while it seems that both workers and employers are using the hard times as a bargaining chip, there must be balance. I want to understand that it's a symbiotic relationship. There's a company and there's a and there's a union. No, without the company, you won't have employees. Without the employees, you won't have union. So there has to be a balance. And in this present situation, we as trade unionists have to see how we can satisfy our constituents, which is the, the workers. But we can only do that if there's trust, if there's honesty and goodwill coming from the employers. And um, if everybody is going to use the economic situation to, to um, hedge money, in other words, pay as little as possible on nothing at all to, to motivate workers, then we're not going anywhere. President of the TUC, Madonna Hafford, says the high cost of living is another issue that trade unionists are expected to deliberate on. Ways and means of having to um, maybe stabilize the economy, ways and means of having to, the, the cost of living, if we could find ways and means of maybe putting a cap to quite a lot of things, because if you leave things like that, it means to say it could get out of hand, and then you have more problems, you have more persons complaining, and um, the cost of living when persons have large families. It's a, it's a, it's a real sad situation, not only in Grenada, but throughout of the world. I guess. The guest speaker at the convention will be Labour Minister from Trinidad and Tobago, Errol McLeod, a former trade unionist and President General of the Oil Field Workers Union for more than 21 years. The TUC biennial convention is usually held every two years.